Hey guys, my name is this, and we're talking about these. Sort of. Actually, our main focus today are these, and why you don't see more of these playing these. So I found a friend who's one of these, who plays and writes about these, to talk with us about why you don't see more of these playing these. It Alright, sorry, I'll stop. I guess before we get started, I should introduce my friend here. Today we have a guest speaker of sorts. Say hello to Miss Lee Alexander. She's a game journalist. If you keep up with video game news at all, you've probably read some of her work. She's the news director for Gamma Sutra, she used to be an associate news editor for Kotaku, and she maintains a regular blog called Sexy Video Game Land. I asked her to join us today because she's written a great deal about today's topic, and I really like her perspective. And since I've already stolen her notes, why don't we get started? The video game world has long been a male-dominated culture. A majority of game design professionals are male. A majority of the people we affectionately call gamers are also male. We guys have been enjoying our games for many years now, and we're looking forward to many years of gaming to come. But every now and then, when we stop to look around ourselves, we sometimes wonder why women don't seem even remotely interested in our favorite hobby. And that's our question of the day. Why aren't women interested in video games? Now, I don't mean to say that there aren't girl gamers out there, because there are. We've all probably got a sister, cousin, or a friend who can kick our ass at Halo. I know I do. And more women are working in the game industry than ever before. But even so, the ratio between male and female in this gaming culture is still extremely imbalanced. Actually, I say that, but I guess it depends on how you look at it. Female interest in video games has actually skyrocketed in the last decade, thanks to the rise of casual gaming. In fact, if PopCap surveys are to be believed, these women outnumber us, and the average gamer is no longer the 18 to 34 year old male, but a woman in her 30s. Of course, these surveys fail to mention that this average gamer is only playing snood all day. This new wave of female gamers mostly fit into the casual demographic, so they're drawn to the browser-based puzzlers, the pet simulators, the sims. But look at any line outside a GameStop on the release of a major new console title and there's nary a woman in sight. And the women who do stand in those lines, the ones who are counting the days until Final Fantasy XIII comes out? Very small minority. In some cases, their fandom may even alienate them from other women. Example, whenever Lee tells people what she does for a living. Upon hearing this, men tend to be surprised and intrigued. Women kind of weirded out and uncomfortable. I'm sure there are plenty of exceptions to this, but how many of you girls can actually talk games with your girlfriends for more than a couple minutes without things getting awkward? Now, the game industry has been making a focused effort to recruit more women into the workforce and diversify their consumer base. There are a lot of women out there who could be regular customers, and it seems we finally figured that out. Efforts are being made to bring more women into the fold, but outside of the casual market, nothing seems to have worked. Meanwhile, we guys would love to have more girls join in on the fun, but it seems to take just as much finessing to get your girl to play games as ever. And I know it's kind of condescending to say, but it doesn't make it any less true. Why aren't women interested in the big console hits? The Prince of Persia's, the Bioshock's, the Halo's? I mean, is it something about the gameplay that just doesn't appeal to the feminine mind? I mean, I guess that could be a factor, but like I said before, there are women who like these games. Is it a problem with the premise these games tend to all share? The sci-fi, space marines, explosions, and big breasts? Actually, that probably has a lot to do with it, but I think it's just part of a much larger issue. You see, looking at our industry from its humble beginnings to now, we've always had this image of being kind of a boys' club. This industry has been male-dominated for a long time, and our games reflect that. Games have been designed and marketed to suit male tastes for so long that women may be conditioned to feel excluded from our culture. This world and these games, they just aren't for them. Just because we aren't trying to exclude women doesn't mean that they feel welcome. Naturally, we want to solve this problem, and our first instinct is usually to try to address past grievances. Months ago, Eidos announced plans to reinvent their most popular character, Lara Croft, to widen franchise appeal. Eidos was unsettlingly vague in describing what they meant by reinvent, but the most obvious option would be to dial back the pandering sex appeal and market Lara to someone other than just teenage males. In theory, this maneuver makes some sense. Lara Croft has always been one of the most well-known sex symbols in gaming, and this trend she helped to start towards hypersexualized female characters may very well be a big reason why women are put off by our pastime. Even female gaming fans have often expressed anger at the exploitive way in which women are often represented in this medium. And it's hard to argue with them. You can't really blame women for looking at box art like this and thinking, you know what, I don't think this was made for me. Even if you enjoy playing a game with an attractive avatar, the obsession with breast physics has to get irritating eventually. So in a way, Idris's gesture makes sense. But assuming they did give her a complete makeover, would a mundane, conservative Lara make the game appeal that much more to women? She's been gaming's biggest sex symbol for so long, it's going to be hard for anyone to perceive her differently. And if women as a group feel that the Tomb Raider games just aren't for them, even a complete Lara overhaul probably isn't going to change their perception of the brand. Change Lara all you want. I don't think women are paying attention. It would be like Hooters announcing that they were going to reinvent the Hooters girl. Sexual innuendo will no longer be our mission statement, and from now on, our scantily clad waitstaff will dress in full business casual attire. Would that really make women any more interested in Hooters? No, women don't care what Hooters does. That place isn't for them, and it never has been. It's the same boys' club mentality, and a little makeover isn't going to fix it. This is going to be a much harder problem to solve. So what should we do instead? How can we start breaking down this barrier and make women feel a little more welcome? As an industry, I think there's a lot we can do. I think it's great that we have a growing female presence in the industry. 
It's not going to break the stigma of the boys' club overnight, but having more women on board will bring a much broader perspective to our design and our approach to making games. If it's true that women are more inclined to using the right side of their brain than men, they could be the key to creating games with a more universal appeal. I think we can look forward to much more variety in our future gaming as more women join the team. As for recruiting new game players, there are a few ways we can go about that. We can always try making games that appeal to women at a younger age so the next generation of women can grow up with an appreciation for our medium. Actually, I, I think that's what Ubisoft has been up to for the last few years. My hat is off to our French and Canadian brothers. You boys know how to plan ahead. But I think the greatest impact is already being made with the growing popularity of the casual game. The sudden rise of the casual gaming market has taught millions of newcomers the fun of video games. Games are reaching completely untapped audiences, and women make up 74% of that audience. That's a huge number of women who are discovering games for the first time. It's easy for game fanatics like us to dismiss Wii Fit, Bejeweled, and Diner Dash, but these games are drawing this new audience in. And with time, many of them may grow curious enough to cross over and try their hand at a Halo match or something. Once we've got their attention, though, we're going to have to keep it, and that's where we can definitely make some changes for the better. As an industry, we need to seriously reconsider our marketing. We need to examine our habit of manipulatively using women for appeal. Booth babes at our conventions, exploitive character design, and I'm not saying all of this has to go away. It has its place, but we need to consider the effect this stuff has on our industry's image. Well, let's go back to Lara for a minute. Toby Gard, Lara's designer, made her to be a sexy, powerful, over-the-top heroine. Pretty much a female Indiana Jones. Intelligent, strong, sexy as all hell. Attractive, but capable. But she's never really been marketed that way, has she? You may see a hint of Toby's Lara in the games themselves, but outside of them, she's marketed as a sex symbol and posing in topless photos. Toby designed a strong, classy woman, marketing reduced her to eye candy, a label she may never be free of. See, it's not just an issue of character design. I don't think women are so fragile that they can't handle playing a sexy video game character. Almost every game character you have ever played is an idealized fantasy character. It's not just about the way they look. The way you market these characters and the way they behave is just as important. If a strong female character is thrown nude into an issue of Playboy, her image as a strong female character is tarnished, and she ceases to be a character that anyone can respect. Maybe if we stopped treating all of our heroines like floozies, we'd have a few more female role model characters for women to identify with. And while we're on that subject, it's worth noting that certain women, you know who you are, have been contributing to this problem. While the industry is using women for sex appeal, some women are guilty of using the industry for the same reason, and it's not really helping things. Being sexy and being a girl who plays games are both easy ways to draw attention, so I understand why some people would capitalize on that. But I don't think this trend is doing anything to help the industry's image. What does a photo like this say about women's place in our gaming culture? Yeah, we guys may appreciate the imagery, but we're smart enough to see the lack of authenticity behind it. I mean, most of us, I think. And most of these girls aren't gamers, and we know it. They aren't part of our club, they're just using our hobby as marketing material. And what do shots like this communicate to other women? Maybe that this is the only role women have in our gaming culture. They aren't equal participants, they can only be involved in an exploitive way. Admittedly, it's a bit unfair to point fingers. A lot of these girls may be legit gamers who just enjoy flaunting what they've got, and it'd be really unfair of me to demand that they set a good example. But at the same time, we have so few other types of female presences in gaming, and this can't be helping either gender feel more comfortable with one another in the game space. And women feel alienated, men feel manipulated, and I'm just saying. But aside from those grievances, we have to learn to make games that will appeal to our newly expanded audience. This is where the game industry's new female recruits can be particularly helpful. With greater variety in the industry's workforce, we'll begin to see greater variety in the kinds of games that industry produces. New settings, new gameplay innovations, new character archetypes, finally, and new approaches to design. A greater diversity in the gaming industry and fan base could be one of the greatest steps forward for this medium. In fact, perhaps the ideal solution will be to just stop drawing gender lines completely. It may be that when we stop thinking so much about games for men versus games for women and just make games for people, things will start to improve. Yes, certain kinds of products and imagery appeal to men while other kinds appeal to women, and there's nothing wrong with that. But you have to wonder if all of this boundary drawing around women in games has just kept them out rather than invited them in. And what good is all of this effort to make games for women if it's only keeping them at arm's length from the rest of the culture, like a huge, exhaustively researched kiddie pool? In the end, I think we would all love for more women to discover video games, and I think the shift of interest is already underway. Casual games may be just what the doctor ordered, a gateway drug, if you will. It starts with an innocent game of Cake Mania, soon you've bought a DS, and before you know it, bam, you're out on the street corner, teeth chattering, waiting in line for burning crusades. Casual games have opened the floodgates to a nervous, untapped public. Let's try our best not to scare them off. And enough of this. Seriously. Stop it.